Hebrews 2. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for your great goodness towards us. We ask you to leave with the mayor and council as they go back to public business this evening. Lead, God, and direct them all that they do. Be with the employees of the city as they go about their daily duties. These things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's fill this week in roll call, please. Mr. Richard Bailey? Here. Mr. Craig Mashburn? Here. Mr. Gary Stewart? Here. Mr. Mike Ashburn? Here. Mr. Patrick Stewart? Here. Go to the adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? Make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. No, we'll vote. I'll ever say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. We'll say no. Go to approval of previous minutes from July 8, 2019. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion. I have a second. Second. In discussion. If not, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. we'll say no. There is no business, so we'll go to new business. First time, first time was a public hearing for alcohol license. Uh, Manta Patel doing business as Marathon Food Mart. So that being said, this is time and place for a public hearing. Is there anyone here for this? Is there anyone here for this? Is there anyone here against this? That will conclude the public hearing. Well, Mr. Stokes, we know the investigative report, please. The applicant is Monte Patel, type of license retail beer and water off premise. Establishment is Marathon Food Mart, located at 18562 John T. Reed Parkway. The nearest church and school footage requirements are met. License application is in order. <coughs> Health, fire, and building inspections comply, and zoning verification complies. Thank you. With them not being here again this week, I have a motion to table this license. Do we have some sort of communication with them? I like that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? So I feel if we make an exception to this and go and pass it, we will open up the door for folks not to come. So I think it's detrimental that they may be here. Any other discussion? If not, we'll vote. Table and all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Go to item number two consider resolution of award pickup truck bid for the fire department. Still, it's going to cover that. Please. We, we posted one bid, mailed three bids, and received one bid for a 2019 pickup truck for the fire department. Carbon Chevrolet bid $40,771.50. And it is recommended that the bid be awarded to Harvin Chevrolet. Do I have a motion to approve the bid recommendation to Harvin Chevrolet for forty thousand seven hundred seventy one dollars and fifty cents? I make a motion. Uh, second. Second. Any discussion? Not will vote on favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Go to item number three. Let's consider appropriation from the tourism grant for the Goose Pond events. Uh, $755.52 from the barbecue for the spring flame uh, banquet and then $4,000 from the 4th of July sponsorship. So a total of $4,755.52 to have a motion to approve the appropriation from the tourism grant to the Goose Park events. I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Not we'll vote on the say aye. Aye. No, no. <clears throat> we'll go to the delegation. Jamie Thomas. I'm not exactly sure how to go about this. Um, 
I'm Jamie Thomas. This is my mom, Vicki Lutch. We live at 117 West Hayes Street, um, which is on the corner of Hayes and Garden. We are having a horrible problem with 18 wheelers coming through the residential area to the point where I feel like my life is in danger. When it hits the power pole, it's going to take out my bedroom. I called the mayor's office. They were concerned, but not concerned enough to do anything. Something's got to be done. Um, this started about a year ago when we had the construction on Cecil Street. It's progressively gotten worse. This is not the Parks Avenue construction, although that traffic is bad. This is just 18 wheelers cutting through to get over to Lozier. We've spoken with some of the drivers. They don't care. I've talked to Lozier. They don't care. The power pole is four feet from the intersection and roughly 40 feet from the house. It has a transformer on it. When it comes down, which is already cracked, we have pictures. They've already run over our mailbox. They shouldn't be there to begin with. There is no signage on Cecil Street, on Porter Road, stating that it's a truck route. That's what I'm asking for. Give us some truck route signs where the trucks are supposed to go. Otherwise, the city of Scottsboro is going to be liable for my life because that pole is going to come across my bed. And if you want to see pictures, Nats is go posted them on Revive Scottsboro. That's my house on the left side. And you can see the truck going around. It's broke the culvert down. And last week alone, there was four trucks through there like that. That we know of. That we know of. This one happened while we was at work Saturday. And he happened to get it on video and he posted it to Revive Scottsboro. And I'm like, oh my God, that's my house. There's a Facebook page called Revive Scottsboro. A lot of these citizens put their concerns. I don't know if any of you know about it. Um, mainly it's the trash pickup and things like that. This concern has been going on, like I said, it's gotten progressively worse over the past year. It's to the point where there's at least one a day that we know about. And it's all hours of the night. When I get up at 4 o'clock to go to work at Maples, there's trucks coming down that road. 10.30 um, at night, you hear them hitting their brakes because they don't know where they're going. You know, and it, it's Pine Street and Chappelle Street, too, right there at Colwell. The intersection where we actually live, the culvert, the whole intersection is being just degraded. Every time there's a heavy rain, there's asphalt and gravel washing out because it's obviously not meant for 18 wheelers. It's a residential neighborhood. It can't handle that weight. But I've already spoken to the mayor or the mayor's office. They didn't seem very concerned. We have to have signs up. That's all I'm asking for. Just signs to where city's not liable. Maybe Google will pick it up and their maps will be better, but we've got to have signage. Well, my neighbor talked to one of the trucker guys and he didn't even speak English. So how can he read a sign if he can't speak, speak and English? And there's very yeah. small signs yeah. that are about this big, coming off of Broad onto the different residential streets. But they're very small. You have to be looking for them. The one at the junior high, I drive past there a couple times a week and I never knew it was there until I actually went looking for it this afternoon. It's so small. If these truck drivers are not familiar with the area, there's nothing clearly marked on Cecil Street. There's nothing clearly marked on Porter Road. I went down both of those. We need truck route signs. We're trying to build up the economy here. We need to make it safe for the residents as well. Did you say you live at the corner of Hayes and Garden Drive? Yes, sir. Does anyone else have anything? I will say that uh, me and uh, Josh, Wayne, and I met this morning talking about signage and, and some, you know, issues not just from the Parks Avenue Bridge, but signage in general and, and I have spoken to Philip and we are getting a price on a two foot by eight foot sign that would hang out with the traffic light 
at Cecil Street. It would say truck route with an arrow pointing to Cecil Street. We're not sure if it would be the first line or the second line of those two together. Uh, we've got to see once we get the sign because there's something about can obstruct the line of sight for a certain distance for the upcoming traffic signal. But we're getting price and going to hang a sign out there to try to assist in all this. That would be good. Thank you. Yes. Well, when you wake up at 10:30 at night because you have sure. to get up at four in the morning from a truck locking down its brakes, I mean, it, your heart just stops. Sure. And yes. there's several times I've gotten up out of bed and stood on my porch because I didn't feel like my bedroom was safe. Well, in, 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 you know, I agree those signs that are on the stop sign, they're on the back side right. of the stop yeah. sign, they couldn't be any larger because then you get yeah. to obstructing yeah. the people that are pulling out from Pine or Chappelle or Hayes on the Broad Street so you get into the safety issue as to how big you can put, but where if, you can put. And my, was the, the concern of if there were signs further back to see some well, that would, can, right. that would Hopefully, take care of the majority of that problem, um, as well as there's not a quarter sure. road, and if they use that as the exit, especially Lozier, because that's where all the drivers that our members have talked to have been going or coming from. Sure. Um, if there is just clear signage, then let's have Sparksboro CD start ticketing them for being in residential neighborhoods. Like it's a, it's danger. What if a child is playing? What if a dog runs out in front of them and they lock it down? And some of them won't fly. Like it's it's scary. Speed limit's 25. Some of these 18 wheelers are going at least 40. I don't know how they get up that kind of speed by the time they get to Chappelle Street, but they do. It's, In your conversation with the truck drivers, do they say how they leave, what direction they go? Do they come back the way they went in, or do they go? We don't know. We don't. And this is only the ones that we are either made aware of by our neighbors or that we actually see when we're right. not working. So there's no telling what goes on in those eight to ten hours that we are at work. Yeah. And it could be more because that's business hours. And I did see the police stop one when they came down Ash on. Street and turned onto Garden going towards the park. And one of the police cruisers had stopped them. And had to guide them back yeah. out of the neighborhood during the school zone. Yeah, so it was during school time. I mean, obviously we're between two, two school zones. Yeah. We need that signage because it's only going to get increasingly worse whenever school starts back. What kind of time frame are we looking at, Mayor? You said you made it down as far as the uh, It was getting priced in today. It was, something, we, it was larger than anything we could build. Sure. You Since this is the last meeting for the month of July, just thought I would give the council an update on what's happening uh, with the Heritage Center project. I've had some communication with KPS, uh, with David Ely and Christine uh, Hardy, that Mr. Ely will not be um, able to start working with us on <coughs> our uh, plans and all of that until around the 1st of September. Uh, while they were waiting for us to get our contract approved, he picked up a couple of other projects and had some vacation time scheduled. So uh, even though we will not start working with him uh, in KPS until sometime around the 1st of September, uh, we are working on uh, things to go over with them. Uh, I met with Jim Olinis. Uh, last Thursday, this past Thursday, um, and we uh, went over some things that we think will come out of that bid. Uh, he is helping us to identify things like kitchen equipment, cabinetry, countertops, uh, furnishings that uh, we may uh, want to pull, which would be the display cases that we have that we will uh, use. Um, maybe reorganizing some things, the way it's displayed, uh, looking at um, things that we will need as far as furniture in that, tables, chairs, all of that. He's trying to get a list of all of that. We're working on that uh, to give to him so that once we get started and we have the drawings, have all of the schematics done, 
uh, he can help us do a CAD design so that we can place everything where we want it to see that it's going to fit in the space and what we'll have to rearrange and uh, do that kind of thing. So when we get the project completed, we will know exactly what display case will go where, where the guns will go, where the arrowheads and the pottery will go, and other things that we have. So we're moving forward with the project. Um, we think that um, there will be several things that can come out of that that we will, the Heritage Center would be responsible for getting uh, bids like on the uh, equipment to make sure that we do get what we need. Maybe some landscaping could be pulled out and we could work with uh, master gardeners and others and do. So we're looking very closely to see what we can do to stay within the budget and how things are going to flow. Our funds continue to come in. Uh, they've been a little bit slower this week, but we're still receiving donations. I think we're in the neighborhood of around uh, donations of about $40,000. And $40,000. Yeah, 40, and uh, we're looking to try to raise uh, at least 100000 more that will put us where we need to be with the budget that KPS gave us that we wanted to be able to work with. We hope we can get it uh, below that. But we're working. We feel comfortable with some fundraising activities that we have that are coming up. And we're looking forward to moving on with the project. And we appreciate what y'all are doing to help us and to realize the dream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, Council. I just want to speak to you for a few moments uh, about the first money problem. Before I get into that, I was just to tell you uh, about this truck driver. I drove trucks for, I don't know, about seven or eight years before I finally decided to retire and get out of the rat race. Scottsboro is not the only problem in town as far as truckers go. A lot of times it's is what we noticed in driving. You run up on streets that the truckers have no idea that they're not supposed to go down. But I would suggest to you that you strongly communicate to the shippers and receivers, whether it be Lozier, whether it be Maples, or whoever it may be, to put out the word on their bills of lading to specifically state what the truck routes are when entering Scottsboro, Alabama. Stay off of it to include stay off. Don't make those turns in the housing areas. Uh, specifically state your truck route is going to be Porter Road. State that and emphasize to the shippers and receivers on their so they may put it on their bills of lading. Very important. And that would be the best way to communicate. And all these trucks that go to these companies have real time communication on those trucks, whether it be Qualcomm or another computer system, they have real-time communication, and they can communicate that directly to the driver uh, when they receive their bill of lading, the shipping, shipment pickup, or when they get to this area. That's just a suggestion. Uh, first money. That's what I really want to talk to you about. The uh, We've had access in the past to the uh, outside bathroom in the northwest corner of the courthouse. We've been, I've been cleaning up that bathroom and stocking it and dealing with it for uh, better than 10 years now. Uh, we've got a problem. There's a structural integrity problem within the courthouse in the northwest, problem, uh, north, northwest corner. Uh, there's falling tiles now, falling ceiling structure. The walls are creating uh, enough pressure on the floor where it is subsiding considerably, at least two to three inches, and it's increasing with a problem. The structure behind that, uh, I'm telling you all this because I think it's important. Uh, behind the bathroom, there's separation of the wall back there in the old structure. You have some collapsing of the structure in the bathroom. The reason I mention this is that the only other restroom we'll have, I no longer have access to that restroom, it's closed, condemned. The only restrooms we will have will be the porta potties. It's extremely important that those porta potties get up out there in a timely fashion on Friday afternoon and remain there through Monday. And whenever they won't pick them up, that's not up to 
us, but whenever they pick them up, it's fine. But they've got to be there from Friday evening to Monday afternoon. We appreciate y'all's help in ensuring, you know, that, that those poor potties are always there. And I had mentioned uh, to Ms. Phillips previously, I'll mention now, that if there's any way that you can get disinfected, one of the important things about the restroom was a hand washing facility. Uh, if there could be disinfectant solution installed in those bathrooms, we had them once before. It's been a while since they've been up. But I just want to stress that it's important. Was that uh, courthouse restroom is no longer available? Any questions? If not, I sure appreciate it. How many court bodies are for? Normally, normally they have one at the post office over there in that parking area, and there'll be two right back here beside the bakery. That's that's the normal uh, distribution of the board bodies. I think it's what is it? A A T W? Is that A W T? Thanks. So. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That will work if you contact those trucking companies via the shipper and receiver. They will put out the message because they believe me. They don't want their drivers to get tickets because that's going to come back on the company too. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> Sir, Reports Mayor. Uh, positive. We've got five knuckle rooms running this afternoon. Uh, got the fifth one back online after lunch today. Uh, <clears throat> and we've got some of the routes that are working 12 hour days till we can get somewhat caught up uh, next week or two. So that's positive. Um, we did secure a source to rent one, but it was extremely expensive, but uh, it's something if we have to look further down the road, but we've got five, four, four as of Friday and five today, so that's positive. Uh, also, there's been a lot of, I guess, discussion on social media about auto parts and auto salvage and so forth on Willow Street. And, and Shane and I, and Rick's been included, have been looking at that, and the city historically has always issued a license uh, for auto salvage, right or wrong, as auto parts supplier. So uh, Shane has identified there is a, a code, a state code for auto salvage. We're looking into that, so we expect to come to the August 5th work session with uh, looking at adopting a new code and, and provisions that would deal with auto salvage and all those issues under that. Can get Mr. Kimber's input more on that as we move forward. I will not be here on August 5th. That's right. But I'll be at the state economic development council. Anyway, we're working on it. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Ashman. I don't have anything tonight. Appreciate y'all coming in. Gary. I don't have anything, but I do appreciate your coming. Mr. Mashburn. I know the mayor touched on the brush trucks. I was one thing I was going to make sure that we stay trying to stay ahead of that. Yep. And if we do, if we do have another one go down, I would like to see us where we need to do get one leased to get it here. Because I I'm really concerned with what we're spending on those trucks. It's already been down. Hard, hard time. So we definitely want to keep the city you know, clean. And, sure. And our employees are doing a great job. They just don't have the best of what work. I understand. Yeah. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you. Mr. Bailey. I just want to thank Ms. Ivy for coming to give us that day. Appreciate that a lot. And hope to see that box filled with, <laughs> with envelopes. And uh, just thank y'all for coming out. I want to remind everybody there will not be a meeting next week. It's Monday. Uh, next uh, meeting will be a work session on August the 5th. Uh, appreciate the, the ladies that came up and talked about trucks coming down. Uh, that has been an issue. Uh, and hopefully, with, with, with proper signing, will be diminished. Uh, and also, communication as well on the work. Appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Then we'll have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All votes out. Aye. Uh -huh.